live from the Cape Land Studios. This is Cape News on your side at 5. Tonight at 5, we say goodbye and salute Susan Peters. Also coming up, we learn the results of a Wichita teacher's vote on longer school days in order to cut more costs from the budget. And with the threat of more severe weather tonight and tomorrow, people in southwest Kansas clean up damage from last night's tornadoes. Good evening. Severe weather season has arrived in Cakeland, full force actually. We're going to have an update on the damage and recovery around Dodge City in just a moment. But we are not out of the woods yet. Jay's tracking the chance of more storms. Jay. That's right. A tornado watch was issued that does include most of greater Wichita and north central Kansas, and that is until 9 o'clock tonight. Storms are just starting to get going. They're just starting to pop up now. We'll use in, zoom in a little bit. I'm going to put this in motion over the past 30 minutes to show you that, yeah, the thunderstorms have finally kind of started to pop up here and they're going to grow quickly. You can see from Ellsworth County, that thunderstorm just starting to pop. Even east of Wichita, looks like a couple of showers are starting to develop. And once they develop, they will quickly have the potential to become severe with larger than two inch hail in some spots. And I can't rule out isolated strong tornadoes also. It's 89 degrees out there now with the winds at 18 miles per hour. Not only is it warm, it is very humid. You can see the two points in the 70s versus the 60s and 50s, and that's why they have an arcing line along that dry line into the east. Very quickly, the chance for severe weather to develop. Storms are just starting to pop now. We're keeping an eye on them throughout the newscast. All right, thanks a lot, Jay. Download the first alert weather app to check live streaming weather information and track severe storms where you live. The Cake First Alert weather app is free for our Apple and Android devices. People across southwest tech, uh, Kansas rather spend the day cleaning up after last night's tornadoes. The National Weather Service's preliminary indications are the storm that touched down southwest of Dodge City was an EF3. In fact, two people were injured. Both have already been treated and released. Cakes Monica Castro reports from Ford County where nine buildings were destroyed. I'm off of Highway 50 in Ford County. Now, as you can see behind me, this house, this property is one of many that was damaged during last night's tornado. Now, if you take a look on the side, this knockdown power line, that is what is causing a lot of trouble and making the cleanup efforts difficult today. As the dawn came, those living in Ford County finally got to see the extent of the tornado's wrath. Leon Flax taking it all in. He wasn't home when the storm hit, but says his wife was. When I came home, wow, where do you start? You just walk around and look. His property was one of many damaged after Tuesday's fierce tornado. Today, he's left with a mess all over his property. I suppose my mouth was hanging open just to see the destruction and the devastation and everything that we took for granted yesterday morning is gone today. All this wood and metal just feed from Flax's house are actually the remains of a mobile home that sat on his property. Here's where it used to sit. And the thing just looks like it literally exploded. If they say get out of a mobile home when a storm approaches, you better listen to it. Residents here stopping by to make sure their neighbors are okay. It must have danced around a little bit and went back that way a little bit, but these tornadoes, you don't know what they're going to do. But most of the cleanup, unfortunately, will have to wait. Biggest problem is, is if you look right behind me, the power lines are all down yet. We can't even get a vehicle in here or out. Many like Flax say this tornado will go down in history. It's the worst we've ever seen by far. The homeowner says he feels fortunate that the mobile home did not fly into his property. He says that no one was inside of the mobile home during the time of the storm. In Ford County, Monica Castro, Cake News. Thanks, Monica. It is going to be a longer school day for Wichita students and teachers next year. Teachers did approve an addendum to their contract for a longer school day and shorter school year. 95% of teachers voted, 70% accepting the change. They agreed to lengthen the school day by 30 30 minutes and shorten the school year to 175 days. It will save the district about $3 million. We spend hours listening to them on the radio, but how much do you really know about your favorite radio personalities? A few sprinkles possible this morning, and then we'll average partly sunny throughout the day. Winds in northerly direction at about... That's Kathy Carrier. She's helped track the forecast across Kansas for decades, but how she got her start may surprise you. Catch the voice sounds familiar. 
our series featuring the stars of local morning radio. The story of Kathy Carrier, that's tonight on Cake News at 10. Tonight on Cake News at 6, we talked to uh, storm trackers who chased yesterday's severe weather, incredible tornadoes all across western Kansas, some even stepping in to help tornado victims. That's at 6. And we're keeping an eye on thunderstorms just starting to pop over parts of Ellsworth County. Again, a tornado watch until 9 o'clock, including greater Wichita and parts of north central Kansas. Keep it on Cake. We'll keep you up to date. Susan, can you actually believe that it was about 20 years ago that we were chasing Bob Dole around on the campaign trail as he was running for president? I, I just can't even believe how time flies. I think your name is probably attached to every big story that's out there in the years that you've been a journalist in Kansas. But, you know, and that is so important. But what's also important are the hugs and the laughs and the smiles that you have shared with viewers because that's what they're going to remember too. They're going to remember all of that. They're going to remember Susan, the journalist, and they're also going to remember Susan, the person, because Susan, you have touched people's hearts. And as you leave, remember that. Good luck, Susan, in your next chapter. Larry Hatterberg is famous for his stories of the people of Kansas. Coming up later, a special Hatterberg's people on his longtime co-anchor here, Susan Peters. This is Cake News at 5 with Susan Peters and Chris Stanford. Now your Cake First Alert forecast with meteorologist Jay Brader. Again, a tornado watch has been issued, including Greater Wichita, Salina, and over towards Great Bend and Russell, and that's going to be in effect until 9 o'clock tonight. I'll tell you, the juice is loose. It feels like a sauna outside. That dew point is 72 degrees, and it's 88 is the temperature with the winds out of the south at 17 miles per hour. Now, that was since midnight that we picked up that inch and a tenth. That's when the rain gauge resets itself. All right, thunderstorms starting to pop now in the vicinity of that dry line. As we look across parts of uh, south central Kansas, Augusta, that thunderstorm is just, and I mean just kind of starting to pop up. So at this point in time, it's nothing we're going to watch. I mean, we're going to watch it, but it's not severe. Now across central Kansas, let me zoom in here into Ellsworth County. And again, thunderstorms just starting to develop. There's a lot of instability here. So this little thunderstorm just to the east of Lincoln, also approaching Ellsworth, not severe now, but these things could quickly start to blossom. In northwest Kansas, you're not out of the severe threat either. Look back into Colorado, got a couple of severe thunderstorms with wind and hail that could roll over towards parts of Cheyenne County, but that is a much smaller risk. Tomorrow, honestly, we'll have a better risk of severe weather across parts of Cake Land than what we're going to see today. 90 Hutch, 87 in Winfield. It's 94 in Medicine Lodge and 86 in Pratt. And again, the dew point, you got that moisture, that fuel. Notice how you got 60s and 70s right up against 50s and 60s. So that's why we got the dry line along it and you back off to the east of it. That is the prime breeding ground for these severe thunderstorms that we're going to see popping later on today. Notice how the satellite picture just starting to kind of take off. Why well, am I more concerned about tomorrow? Next little short waves in Southern California, that's going to be rolling towards Cake Land and enhance our severe weather risk. So the RPM model, notice how it's saying about 5 o'clock there will be a few more thunderstorms. There will not be a lot of thunderstorms, but the ones that really get going have the potential for very large hail, larger than two inches in diameter. I can't rule out an isolated tornado or two this afternoon, but by 10 o'clock, that's really going to start to settle down. And then let's reset the clock tomorrow. We're going to find out where that dry line and warm front is. Tomorrow, it's going to stretch from south central back up into northwest Kansas. And then late tomorrow afternoon, more numerous, the showers and thunderstorms. And here, another large hail potential and also the potential for a few strong tornadoes. So in the orange area, I think the greatest threat area for large hail, some damaging wind gusts, and maybe a few tornadoes, EF2 or stronger. And that should go all the way into northwest Kansas. So we'll continue to keep that eye on the forecast for you. And I got a bit. Uh, the forecast. All right, next several days, we're going to just have chances for severe weather and there's a lot of 80s. Been so focused on today and tomorrow, we'll try to get that, uh, that planner updated a little bit later on. You know, one thing interesting, 12 years ago when I first came here, Susan sat right there. <laughs> Would you I like, did, didn't I? You want to you switch? Sat, we trade places? No, you, you sat there I for did. your whole career here until I showed up. Because I am so large, and Susan is so big, if I don't <laughs> pet my chair down, <laughs> see, I'm 6'4", 
So they said, you know what? You look like you could lean over and break Susan because she's so <laughs> petite. So not only are we going to make you lower your chair, we're going to put it on the other put side. Put it on the, the other side. As possible. And hopefully the sportscaster will be a little bit shorter. Now I've got now I've got Chris, I know. who's as tall as Jay almost. So I'm sorry that I pushed you to the other side of the desk. I love you, Jay. I love you, Susan. I love you, Jay. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. I have you. sat next to you more than anybody else in my career. I'm going to miss you dearly, sweetheart. Thank you, Jay. Love you. Love. We'll be right back. For decades, this face sat across from me in the Cake TV newsroom, which is why it is difficult to believe that Susan Peters is leaving Cake. Susie, you've been so much of Cake's success over the years. Frankly, I never thought you would leave, but you and television just go together. Now, the station, the viewers, and the business list, will miss your effervescent smile, your professionalism, toys, and your boundless care. energy. But, Sue, I remember when I read some viewer comments on the air. Now, I saved one because it made me smile. John and Debbie wrote, why does she bounce constantly when reporting the news? Very annoying. Well, you do bounce, but that's what makes you unique. Watch as you're talking with ABC anchor Peter Jennings at a Republican convention. Last night, the Kansas delegation was in the spotlight because they obviously put Bob Dole over the top. Mm. But it wasn't on any of the three networks. See, you are bouncing, but we love it. Hey, Susan. Hello, How are Mr. you? Fred. Over the years, Susan, you've given us so many memorable moments. Now, your series on the president's Kansas roots are etched in my mind as one of the most informative series that I've ever seen locally. Then, you interviewed the president and gave him a book you had prepared about his mother and other relatives who lived here in Kansas. This is your great-great-grandmother who is a farm wife. Right. What a moment for him. What a moment for you. Now, Susan, you've been everywhere, reporting from the Greensburg tornado after that devastating strike there. Then, in Washington, where honor flights were given World War II veterans, you were there with them for moments they'll never forget. And even All tonight, right ending the day was he something that meant so much to them 60 years ago. And then there was your BTK reports, heart-rendering interviews with family members who survived the madness and terror the of BTK. Of BTK. The reports were deep, powerful, and well, unforgettable. You were even on CNN with, with Larry King. And you always loved That's reporting true. politics. And recently I saw you sit down with Charles Koch, the billionaire in our backyard. Once again, well, insightful reporting with a man who makes news whenever come, he speaks. But for me, your true gift was your staying power. When viewers turned on the newscast you and you were there, the they knew they were watching a friend. Night like after night through thousands of newscasts, your 37 career created nightly memories of someone who cared for the community and its people. Now, in the early years when you were just starting out in Wichita at the old KTVH, now KWCH, that personality of yours was already bubbling to the surface. Well, from there, you left and went to KFMB in San Diego. Then the good news was you returned to cake. You anchored with John, Jeff, Chris, and a guy named Larry. And you showed us the power that an engaged, talented journalist can make in a community. But, Sue... You did have other moments that I just happened to have here when the mind wanders, but the body stays on TV. For weeks, Californians have been suffering through rolling blackouts and rising energy prices. Sue? Yeah. Would you like to talk to the folks up there? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> I was eating chocolate. You were eating chocolate, and sometimes the camera comes back on, and we don't know I'm it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I love that little clip because we had fun. And, Susan, I have to tell you that my most memorable moments on TV came with you as a co-anchor. I loved anchoring with you because you made it fun. Now, we would occasionally get mad at each other, and Susan, we knew how to drive each other like nuts, red, but there was trust, respect, and that forever personal relationship. And it's the same relationship you had with viewers. And that's why you could spend 37 years in front of the camera, and that almost never happens in the TV business. But behind the scenes, 
this was the other Susan Peters. The mom of two incredible daughters, Jenna and Nikki, and they forever changed you, which is why your Susan Kids segment is so close to your heart. You couldn't imagine your children growing up without parents, so you committed to helping other children find forever homes. And that, Susan, is what sets you apart. It is your giving heart. I am so sorry I'm not there tonight to give you a hug, but I'm on the other side of the world. You know I love you, and I'm so happy for your gift of freedom. I will always be able to tell my grandchildren, though, I worked with Susan Peters, the legend. I don't know what to say. I love you, Chris. Oh, you too, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had lunch with Larry when I started here. Yeah. And he said, the camera loves her. <laughs> and he was so right. I'm so honored that you're crying. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah, we will, I think. For over two decades, we've welcomed Susan Peters into our homes from her anchor chair at Cake. She brought us the news and earned our trust and respect. And when the camera lights went dark, she continued her full-time passion, helping children throughout our community. On behalf of all of the Pompeo family and all of South Central Kansas, Thank you, Susan, for your dedication and continued professionalism. Best of luck to you in your next adventure. Away from home? Get your Cake First Alert forecast on KUIN KNSS. There's a lot of things that you don't know about my mom or Susan Peters as you guys know her. She was an amazing mom. I can't stress that enough. She probably doesn't know it. I probably don't tell her enough. She gave me and my sister unconditional love, selfless love, and endless love. She put us first before her job, and though she does feel guilty about that sometimes, I know she wishes she was home more throughout our childhood, but I wouldn't have it any other way. There's no other way I would have sat under her desk when I was a little girl and got to experience those things behind the scenes, or there's no way that after she got home after the 10 o'clock news that we'd have popcorn parties and watch TV. I wouldn't have her life any other way because she's taught me more than anyone else I could ever imagine. She's taught me how to be an independent woman, to chase my dreams, to do what I love, no matter who's standing in front of her. She's done this for over 30 years, and that is amazing to me. A lot of people don't see the hard work that goes behind what she does just on set. Yeah, she's great behind the camera, and she has a great smile, but she's an amazing writer. She's an amazing speaker. She gives back to the community. She's been very blessed with this job, very blessed with her life. She's worked hard to get here, but she's always given back and she's taught me that the importance of giving back is almost more important than the job itself she's really weird <laughs> she's really weird you guys don't see it all the time she's really strange but it's because i'm strange too because of it so i think her strange is good it's good she's silly she doesn't know how to use her phone she's technologically inclined more than any other person i've ever met and it's hilarious and it's frustrating. She cooks sometimes on Sundays. She likes leftovers. She can't sing at all, but she likes doing it anyway. Um, she's just an amazing person. She, she brings so much joy to my life and to everyone else's. And that's all you can really ask is for someone to bring joy to your life and laughter. She brings a lot of laughter. If we could live together, I'd do it. She would drop everything and move into an apartment with me and my sister. We're best friends. And how cool is it to have your mom as your best friend? So, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so how am I gonna top? She's so right though. But she said everything. She did. <laughs> and she's sitting right there. And now you're gonna have all this time to spend with them. Uh, well, that's true. Good point. We'll be right back. Thanks, Jenna. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> Thank you all so much for the hundreds of uh, emails and Facebook messages and phone calls and, and everything the last uh, couple of weeks. And thank you all for watching all these years. Uh, 
I, I and that, okay, come out to the three shot. Okay. <laughs> Jay, I love you. I love you, sweetheart. I love oh, you. I always he love. loves Lebanese food, so this is my grandmother's <laughs> recipe. My grandmother's recipe for rolled grape leaves, and Chris likes Italian food, so this is my mom's recipe for manicotti. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I love you all. And, and you thank you so much. I love you, Chris. I love you, Jay. We'll miss you. I'll miss you so much. <laughs> All right, one last time. Okay. Okay, it was six, isn't it? That's it, Chris. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> For breaking news and your most accurate local forecast, Cake News is on air, online, and on your mobile. Cake News on your side.